any way. Uh -huh. You have to sit down and, and Hello, welcome. My name is Obedako. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Today I want to share some few tips with you in how to predict the future um, of, of your children, how to predict what you become. You know, there are some few things that will indicate or that will by always show what people become. We, came, we come out of a background where we think that, you know, anything at all can happen in the future. You can predict what people will become. You know, everything is some esoteric, some, you know, some, some way that we don't have any control. But upon second thought, you can see that so a lot of things can be designed. And success is one of them. Production is some, one of them. Productivity, wealth, um, 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 richness. Um, a lot of things that you see people are doing. Great achievements they are things that people really construct whether they are intentional or they are not intentional whether they are aware or not if you talk to a lot of these great achievers in any field you will see that some of these things run uh, through them you know so it, it, it things don't just happen you say that oh the guy was nothing and just yesterday he, <laughs> he became greatly successful so one of the things that you see is the family background has huge huge impact on what people will eventually become because family is a is a is a is a, is, a, is a school is a training ground you know and family does not necessarily mean mother and wife um husband and wife and children which maybe is the id situation but if you had an uncle if you had a mentor if you had somebody who was always talking to you and training you and linking you and and, and talking to you those things will have effect on what you become Maybe your grandfather, maybe your somebody who had great impact on you. That then is called family. Or maybe sometimes even friends, people, relationships, they shape what you become. If they were rich, they will show they will shape your thinking of wealth. If they were poor, they will also affect you. <laughs> so uh, what people become eventually, those things will have effect on them. But the, the best of all that I really believe in is the kind of materials, the kind of input the kind of flow of knowledge that people get access to as they as they grow up books you know videos and we live in a time especially youtube audio what they call podcast radio the things that we listen to especially when it comes to those who are able to build something out of nothing those who are able to create huge wealth most of them will shape their mind by the books that they read especially the financial books that they read, the financial videos that they read, the seminars that they go to, the input, the wealth, the, the, the rich people or the successful business people that they listen to, their contacts, those will, 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 will fossilize their, their, their mind on a lot of this is on and on work ethics, on how they handle time, on their honesty, on their productivity. Some people are lazy because nobody pushed them to work. Some people are also very hardworking and truthful. You can depend on them because of these things that influence them. So if nothing at all predicts the success of anything, the flow of information, the knowledge, the understanding, the wisdom that the person gathers out of the environment that they grew up, the things that train them will eventually determine what they become in life, what they become in life. The kind of secondary school that you went to, <laughs> or whether you didn't go. The other day I was sitting down, I was looking at, I went to some of the websites of, um, or some of the write-ups of some of the secondary schools in our country, Ghana, and I, I look at uh, notable alumni, you know, and uh, you could see that some of, the, most of the things that we were celebrating are people who work for government, you know, politicians and civil servants, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, you know diplomats and things like that but people outside the the, the influence of government uh, you could easily see some secondary schools who are not producing any people who were able to build something on their own majority of them if you take government out <laughs> they don't have any successful person so the culture of where the secondary school was built sometimes those who would go up forward to go to university the kind of university you go to uh, will have a great impact on you and even sometimes the courses it's not even sometimes the courses that you read in the school will have a great impact on you on you some courses will just help you to read literature some courses will help you to think and think well even the kind of university that you went to the culture in that university if they were training people to be highly independent and responsible or they were training people to be dependent and to become employees they will have great impact on what they become and they are contributing to and they are contributing to the success of our country the other thing will be 
the kind of person you marry they have great impact on what you become <laughs> and these things I think can all be designed if you are equipped with the right knowledge if you're going to choose something and you have no expert advice on what to choose then anything at all can be your choice but the moment you're informed then you have a better way of at least at least picking something that will likely work for the long haul so it's like somebody looking out to choose a life partner if you if what you're looking for is superficial and shallow then uh, you know if those are the things that you believe in but somebody else is, uh, would have the very key things that are very critical uh, to uh, you know picking somebody who can be part of uh, who they can be part uh, you know life partners and then they'll be able to do something great and significant in life what you look for is key the mindset of the person the work ethics of the person you know how they handle money how they work their values you know they, 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 are they are they courageous are they respectful are they compassionate are they people who are always challenging themselves and learning or the other kind who anything goes and they stay with it. the kind of university and the kind of uh, courses that you choose courses that will make you think and question things critical thinking is very much important in what you become in this life the quality of decisions that you're making the tools that you use to make these decisions they are key to what you become the questions that you ask and so there are some courses that you do if government does not hold your hand it will be very difficult for you to become any great achiever and and and, and uh, in africa majority of our big men are just coming from the government support you know so if you take government out government job government positions government thing uh, there's no big money anyway <laughs> there's no big woman anyway you know because it's so difficult for people to be equipped to make life and build life and build structures themselves you know so my name is Obeda. i'm talking about some of the things that can easily predict what you become and so which means that if you pay attention to these things then you'll be able to build a better future for yourself and you'll be able to build a better future even for your children if things don't just happen you don't just hope that one day they will become great you know a lot of things are stationed a lot of things are built majority of the things are worked out are constructed you know but most people think that it really does not matter the part that you you take you will still get there anyway anyhow and that's the majority of the thinking of the africans you know the africans they believe that they are not responsible for anything and that they, no matter how they behave their future will be right that is not necessarily true the future is resident on what you are doing today so if the things that you're doing you're not very much intentional about them then you know that your future you can be intentional about your future so i talk about the family background is key the kind of family background that you come from it can be an asset or it can be a liability if you came from a rich background it will have a way and if they taught you sometimes people say that you know the difficulties of life they yes but what really you need is the is the knowledge is the wisdom is the expertise that come out of um the the experiences that you go through so it's not so much the experience that was needed but the lessons that you pick from them so if it does those lessons can be picked out of teachings then you're better off you know and so the books that you read as well the knowledge the channels that feed you to become because you're nothing but the ways that you're made of you're nothing but the trainings that you're exposed to so you're nothing those of us who think that we have we have nobody to support us you can still build up knowledge and push your life on the direction that you really want to see you have to challenge the old knowledge and come up with the new ones the seminars that you go to you are in school you're always learning architecture you're not reading anything about anything you think that once you come out of school some some consultants somewhere will pick you and employ you even if they employ you your finances and your productivity and what you become will depend on you not so much on the on the job and a lot of high productive people will not connect with lazy minded very shallow minded people the one people who are very much exposed and who want to go the extra man who always want to do more and i'm saying that even the secondary schools that you choose for your children the culture there because what you want the children to become is highly independent in thinking and very ambitious and hard working and very compassionate kind and respectful and honest and patriotic and proud especially 
as Africans. You don't want a child to go to school and when they come out, they don't want to do, don't have anything to do with Ghana or with Nigeria or with Africa. They want to live in America. They want to live in England. They are not comfortable and confident in themselves and proud of themselves as Africans. Then you have done bad work. And so you don't want to push your child into going to secondary schools or, or schools that when they come. I remember they said at the time that there was the independence time or somewhere, some people were sent out of Ghana to England and when they came back, they didn't want to even eat uh, cassava. They were eating porero <laughs> and they didn't want to wear the kente. They were wearing suit and tie and they would change their name from Akwasia Mankwa to Gerard Williams. <laughs> Why? Because the knowledge of self, of the African history that made them proud was absent. And so when they went to school in some of these countries, the things that they taught them about the Africans and their civilizations, they told them that the Africans were civilized, they were not full human beings, they were unpolished, they came to civilize them. Those kind of things. If they are teaching your children at the primary or at the, at the secondary school level and the Africans, you can be sure of the kind of future that your child will have. Because then the identity will be in question. And the quality of history they teach you will help you to form the right identity. And with the right identity, then the child will have that sense of purpose. And, and that sense of purpose will direct all their lives. And the fulfillment that comes out of life, freedom, you are, you are taught to be free into greatness. But a lot of our people have been taught into bondage because then, that's why the other day, just today, I was reading uh, my friend's Facebook and he said that, so what did he say? He said, what did the, who created the, the black man? And why did they have to come to this world to do what? You see, his mind has been so polluted, but it's because he's so shallow and he's not equipped and he doesn't have data, he's still arguing that there is something wrong with the African. And so I don't expect any greatness from this man who doubts himself. And so I ask him, are you talking of yourself as an African or you are talking of all of us? Because definitely this is not all of us, it's you. Because you have refused to upgrade your knowledge beyond what you see on TV and what the white man has told you, you think that you are nothing and your people are corrupt and ill-equipped. A lot of Africans have this identity crisis because they are bombarded every day with shallowness and, 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 and falsehood about themselves, about their history, about their race. And so you are saying that, oh, the white man, so I mean, he believes that something great is in the white man, but the Africans, God, <laughs> may have been, they have regretted making them. That's somebody who is running with the tape of the, the people who sought to destroy us. And so a lot of Africans have doubt, especially those from West Africa, you know. <laughs> so they praise everybody as culture by their own. So when you're sending your children to school, look at the culture as well, so that they will not finish and become, and they hate themselves. They will not finish the secondary school and hate themselves. They will not finish the university and hate themselves, you know. And then something that will teach them about finance, money. So that they know that the profession, the career, the certificate from school is different from money. A lot of people are not able to separate that. A lot of people think that once they went to school to study this and they got the first class, it means that they will get money. Money does not follow degree. Money is not in the classroom. Certificate is in the classroom. So you're happy you have a certificate. Now go and look for the knowledge that will make you have financial power. This world, if you, have, you want to have freedom, you must have financial power. If you don't have economic leverage, you and the other one are the same. So don't trivialize the importance of having economic power. You know, if you don't have financial power, a lot of things. You work and you're not happy to work, but you can't leave the place because you need a salary. You know, they will post you to a place you don't want to go, but you need. You live in countries that you hate to live, but because of the money. So it's critical that you also teach them. They become aware of finance. The world runs on money. <laughs> the wars that they are, you know, the wars that they are having, the wars that are going on now, those without money will run out of power. <laughs> they, they will be overcome. You know, so um, thank you very much for taking your time to watch this. Thank you very much.